we never used to dine at a dinner table. We used to have our food and just place the plates on your lap and watch TV, you know. Yeah. And we marketers need to start really think offline and how those behaviors can influence online behaviors. This is the Brave Ideas Podcast, brought to you by Aqua, part of the Wonderman Network. Welcome to episode 29 of the Brave Ideas Podcast, the show that is all about bringing to light fresh perspectives from the worlds of digital and marketing. I'm Dan Herman. I'm a digital strategist. I've been instructed to watch boxing matches, and I'm a firm advocate of product placement. And I'm here today with my co-host... I'm Esther McGear, Head of Conversation Analytics here at Aqua, and I'm obsessed with process, structure, and beating Dan into submission. Today, we are really excited to have with us Sefiso Kumalo, Digital Campaign Manager at Aqua. Sefiso says he's not that fun, but we all know that he's really a digital pantsula. Correct. <laughs> and today, he's going to talk to us about the second screen. Sefiso, what's new? Hi, Dan. Hi, Esther. And thank you for having me. Well, people hardly watch TV alone, even those people that are sitting alone on their couch. They are accompanied by something, and that is their smart devices, smartphones, tablets. And um, just to break it down, a second screen is a second electronic device that people use when they engage with the TV program. So it's often like a tablet or a smartphone, and it can be also called a TV companion device. So the second screen is something that's very real. It's something that has become a very big part of our lives today because we know how huge television is and we know how massive smartphones are becoming, as well as tablets and whatever. So I'd be quite interested to get a sense as to how brands are taking advantage of the second screen. Okay. People are using their second screens to search for information about what they're watching. And those activities can be called second screen searches. So when a big event is happening on TV, we turn to our second screens and search. We might even want to buy a dress that we saw on the red carpet during an awards show. So when TV viewers uh, want more when they watch, they have questions, the who's, the what's, the how's, the where can I get that, how much, and... You know the drill. And, um, and I think these are very obvious patterns. But you're right, Dan. The question we need to pose here is how do digital marketers capture people's interest in these moments of curiosity? I mean, who doesn't watch TV without uh, a device in hand? You know what I mean? Sure. And we just need to leverage that opportunity and just become part of those moments and enhance the TV viewing experience. So, in South Africa, we have massive movements around local TV shows and hashtags that are created live around local TV shows and how the watchers of these shows, the audiences, engage in massive conversation and meme creation while these shows actually play. Perhaps you have other examples of how marketers have already used that second screen opportunity. Sure thing. Our second screen presents huge opportunities in the market because people aren't passively following conversations. You know, they're actively involved, they're leaning towards that information, they want to know what's up, and they're ready to take action. So a good example is the real-time campaign that Google Play ran during the Oscars. So what happens is that Google Play placed some data at the center of the campaign, and they found out that as soon as a movie wins an award, searches for that movie skyrocket. So what happens is that Google Play ran a real-time campaign and served congratulatory ads, based on the movies that won the awards. And the ads basically also drove people to to the Google Play Store to rent and buy the movie. So you can see that they're tapping on that conversation and, you know, they're really leveraging the online activity that's happening and the searches. At the same time. At the same time, yeah. yeah. And I I like the fact that they didn't just go with, with this campaign. They really researched and they also found out that the search interest lasts like 15 minutes. So that also gave them like a time frame to really carry out a certain ad in that 15 minutes and just using the time frame as a benchmark to make sure that they're still relevant because this is real time. So events just unfold quickly, you know what I mean? So you also need to make sure that when you're serving those ads, those ads are relevant at that time. So that's like really the key point. I think you've landed it is that people want to engage in real time and things that happen live are really important. Esther, your point about local content is exactly right because the behavior that people have with regards to international content is very different, right? A lot of people are downloading, streaming from Netflix, streaming from Showmax, 
there's not that real time connection or engagement, and you don't feel as if you're part of a community of people who are watching something at the same time. Whereas for live events or local content that is being released first to market, or sport, for example, real time provides massive opportunities and we've definitely seen the holy grail of real time in recent years internationally been the Super Bowl sure. and how people have really responded to how brands are really trying to own that space and own the internet in relation to that space so using a lot of social content to generate to that support live experience. or be part of that conversation yeah. but we also know that it's not necessarily something that you it's a very, I mean, it's a very cluttered space as well. Sure. Every, you know, it's one thing to be real time. It's another thing where everyone wants to be real time and everyone wants to get into the conversation. And it goes back to our conversation around hashtags that we had, which is around, you know, making sure that when you're in a conversation that you're relevant and you're owning that conversation in the right way. Do you have any thoughts around that, Ed? Well, yes. And also in terms of what, we, what was said earlier around whether your content, even if it's within that digital media space, mm-hmm. is extremely relevant so is it for right now is the conversation you know like we can't really preempt that it's almost got to be like we're creating Mm -hmm. on the fly in terms of what's happening I would like to know if perhaps new technology so for instance we've seen uh, Shazam being used by advertisers through television where you're listening and watching something Mm -hmm. you can Shazam and then connect with a digital experience are there any other type of digital technologies that are being developed that way yes um, those are called second screen apps so an app like Shazam would add to the TV viewing experience and the app offered a service where people can identify featured music in the show, access cast information and just um, get links to the show online. So another classic example I like to share regarding the second screen app is um, the American Broadcasting Company made a show shoppable via a second screen app. So they were promoting their new show called Scandal. What happens is via the app, uh, consumers could discover and shop some fashion and some housing furnishing products that mm-hmm. you saw on the show. That you're seeing live on, that the, you're seeing on live. So, in their set. Yeah. That's incredible. That's, that's quite dope. And of, of course, they understand their market and, and they know that people maybe might have searched things like scandal couches or yeah. scandal you know what I mean yeah, yeah. so or the just, outfits for sure the uh, female of course, outfits of course yeah so, <laughs> so that's amazing so they actually like the props you can yeah. buy the props you can in the buy show. the props yeah. buy your phone yeah and they also just amazing. used it they to should do that for Game of Thrones <laughs> well, that was so that was so completely because <laughs> you want to be cosplay all day yeah but that completely changes even how you finance the show that you're creating True. because yeah. now you can get the different departments who are actually selling the yeah. food etc yes. to finance your entire show True. it's quite incredible it's yeah. a whole brave new world well, well what I love about that is also it's one thing to use second screen to get people to have a conversation sure. and talk about something it's another thing completely to get people to take a purchase action mm-hmm. as a function of your second screen interaction and I'd love to get a bit practical about it in terms of what a brand can do to take advantage of moments of curiosity mm-hmm. to drive a sale well like I said, we're always going to go back to the Google Play case study where they really, really place data at the center of everything. So before you even want to carry out a campaign like that, you really need to understand how people are searching for that type of content. Mm. For an example, people watch the Oscars or the Grammys and they see different dresses, you know, from celebrities and stuff. Mm. So you need to understand the search patterns at that moment. So, you know, people wouldn't just... Google or, or search something like Beyonce dress. They would yeah. really want to search like affordable Beyonce dress or sure. Beyonce dress looking like. So I, if I hear what you're saying, it's about before you even go into that experience live, yeah, sure. it's about doing the setup of what are the human truths yes. around yeah. what we're going to try and achieve. Yes. We know that we want to achieve, for instance, sales on our yeah. website. Yes, so what are the human truths that we can preempt already yeah. using data mm-hmm. to go into that show and know that we'll be able to action something? I totally agree with that. It's about understanding your target market. But I think that like what you're onto here is something really important yeah. because... A lot of people look at TV, and let's say let's just take TV as the screen one. The primary yeah. screen. People look at TV and they say, TV is about putting your brand out there, and you know you can have a call to action from TV, but it's really about this mass reach and mass awareness perspective. And what the second screen is telling us is that it's not simply about that. No. Is that 
you can do two jobs at once. Yes. You can create awareness of your product mm -hmm. and drive the consideration and push people down into a point of purchase. If you're smart mm -hmm. about how you leverage the other screens yeah. that mm. people are connecting with. And right. it's, such a, it's such an important point because I really feel quite strongly that in this market that we operate in in South Africa and potentially other markets around the world, and it's a theme that comes up around understanding integration between channels. Like to truly understand integrations channels, understanding that they all need to work together mm -hmm. and achieve the same objective. Sure. But people are very territorial, right? They're territorial True. about making sure that yes. you know. If you look at it from an agency perspective, you've got this agency doing the TV and that agency doing the, the research and this, and like it should all come together, together and work as one because that's how consumers experience things today exactly and it's such a it's such a beautiful conversation and a beautiful point to have made so sure. thank you Svisa. i think it's really great the other question i want to ask is just about the power of sports in driving the second screen conversation do you have any insights you can share around that sure thing uh, all these tv programs sports events award shows reality tv shows present digital marketers with opportunities to run real-time campaigns as aforementioned um, because all these programs um, involved a lot of audience participation. So sports has a massive following in you just seen with the Cricket T20 World Cup and there will be more events like the Olympics you know that we can also just take advantage of and uh, there's an agency called Sprint which was one of the first agencies to leverage uh, Twitter's ad targeting tool during an NBA basketball game. So as fans watched the game on TV, they could tweet at um, the Sprint's Twitter handle and they could actually interact and engage with um, Kevin Love uh, using the hashtag KLoveTakeOver. So initially those users um, indicated that they were watching the basketball game, so in turn what Sprint did was to serve those users with Sprint promoted tweets that had deals on, on, on basketball wear, basketball clothes and sports and stuff. So that's just an example of how marketers can also just uh, leverage the whole sporting community and the massive reach and following that sports has. And just to also just to consider the second screen, because Twitter is also sort of like a live platform because no, things absolutely. you know unfold on Twitter all the time like live events unfold yeah. on Twitter all the time so yeah coming with the Olympics coming up brands can now you know start strategizing and, and think of ways to actually leverage that event to push their product. I love that idea because it's also something that we as an agency have been working on from a conversation analytics point of view, hand in hand with the media team, mm -hmm. in terms of not only just now getting to a space where you're promoting and you've got that always on promotion yeah. on social media, sure. but also now we're able to create uh, databases of people that we're promoting directly to. Mm -hmm. So just as you explained with Sprint, yeah. if there's a way that we can capture an audience mm -hmm. at that moment, there's still a way that we can then remarket at a different moment sure. to those same people once we have that database. So I love that idea. Sure. If there was one thing that you want to, to leave with our agency, the broader Wonderman community and also any of our other listeners today, what would that one point be? That one point would be, okay, can I make two? Just sure, of course, you can make as many as you like. Um, I'll start with this one. I think we just fell into the trap of focusing too much on data, digital data per se. And we straying away from cultural insights, you know, uh, things that happen offline and things that can influence online activity and online behavior. Historically speaking, TV has been a big part of our lives, you know, especially as a young kid. I know we never used to dine at a dinner table. We used to have our food and just place the plates on your lap and watch <laughs> TV, you know. Yeah. So that's a huge integral part of just the black community family and that we marketers need to start really think offline and how those behaviors can influence online behaviors. Sure. You know, and the second point is that um, there are plenty of opportunities to practice real-time campaigns in Africa. I'm saying Africa because, you know, we've had a slow penetration of smartphone devices in Africa and that is changing soon. And like I mentioned earlier that reality TV shows in Africa are coming up I'm talking Big Brother Africa, that was quite big. Idol's essay, that's quite big. Our Perfect Wedding, you know, that's, that's quite big. That's massive. That's yeah, massive. That's the biggest you know, one. I should thing. watch that. You yeah. should. <laughs> so we, we, we should just take into consideration that the opportunities are still there and we just need to 
dive into them and just enhance the TV experience. And marketers don't need to interrupt their the experience. They need to just enhance it because uh, I don't want to confuse people and say, hey, if people are talking about this, you can just you know, throw your ad there. But no, your ad needs to actually enhance the TV experience and make this whole process seamless. Yeah. Awesome, Svisa. So if people want to find out more about this topic or more about you, what do they need to do? And they can follow me on Twitter at Mafisto Kumalo. And on LinkedIn, I'm Svisa Kumalo. Facebook, it's Svisa Mafisto Kumalo. And then you can engage from there. And otherwise, you can just research and second screen uh, searches and learn more about the topic. Awesome. Thanks, Svisa. And thank you for listening to the Brave Ideas podcast. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. And while you're there, give us a rating and a review. For more awesome content, please visit the Brave Ideas blog, which you can find at aquaonline.com forward slash Brave Ideas podcast. Also, if you want to get involved in the conversation, and we do love it when you do, please follow at Aqua Brave Ideas on Twitter or Brave Ideas podcast on Instagram. If you want to keep in touch with me, Dan, you can connect with me at Elhermo, E-L-H-E-R-M-O on Twitter and Elhermo23 on Snapchat and Instagram. And you can get in touch with Esther. You can email me at estherm at aquaonline.com. Special thank you to Sofiso Kumalo, our guest. Thanks to Matt Klevansky for engineering and production. And thanks to Matt and Isaac Klevansky for the music. Thanks to Johan Boerter for the art direction. And to our distribution team, Magesh Ramsamy, Kirsten Wiggle, Helen Semenis, and Sabelo Kanile. That brings us to the end of the show. We'll leave you with one final thought. There are no original ideas only original people.